Daniel Haikachu has a complaint. Sure, Islam imposes a death penalty for leaving it. Yes, there are criminal punishments. Sure, Islam requires conquest. There is um, conquest. Sure, Muslims view themselves as in a constant war with non-Muslims. There is war theory. But that's only 5% of Islam. That 5%. And for some reason, people only focus on that 5%. It's interesting how when a conversation is about Islam, we focus on that 5% instead of the 95% of what Islam is about. Let's grant Daniel's claim and see if we can figure out why people might be bothered by 5% violence. Mary, I believe that you wanted to start us off by explaining how we get to 5% violence in Islam. Let's compare the 5% of your life spent killing apostates and conducting jihad with a couple of very notorious serial killers and what that would work out to. Now, the most prolific serial killer in all of British history is believed to be Harold Shipman. He was a doctor who, whenever his patients got elderly, he would go over to their house and kill them. He was in a small village and he used drugs that worked pretty fast and efficiently. So it would take him approximately one hour to kill each of his victims. Now, if we work out how much of his entire life this was, it was a mere 0.05% violence that was spent killing those 250 people. Okay, let's just talk about his working career. How much of his career was spent in violence killing people? Well, you get 0.52%. Not even 1% of his career was spent killing people. So my question to you, Robert, is why is it that we focus on the other 99.5% of Harold Shipman's career in which he killed 250 people instead of paying attention to the 99.5% of his career where he was a dedicated and caring and gentle and beloved <laughs> doctor of the community. So do you have any idea? Because this is clearly double standards according to Daniel. I want to commend you for your comparison. That's extraordinarily clever. That's very good. I think there might have been some people, maybe, who were impressed by Daniel Hakikaju's argument in thinking that, oh, he, it's true, there's just 5% bad stuff in Islam, and why are we focusing on that? And so you've really brought this into sharp relief. Daniel Hakikaju, in his argument, was actually echoing the arguments of people who say things like, well, you know, Hitler was awfully good to his dog. He loved <laughs> his German shepherd, and he was gentle and sweet and kind to his dog. And so how can you say that he was this terrible person just because he was responsible for the murders of over 6 million people? Clearly, that's emphasizing the wrong thing. That's only a small part of Hitler's life. And so Daniel Hakikaju would want to divert our attention away from killing in Islam, obviously because he wants to lull Westerners into complacency regarding the nature of Islam so that there's no resistance as Islam advances in the West. When, as Rashid on the show quite uh, correctly observed, if I had a glass of water and I told you, here's some pure, clear, cool water, and you're thirsty and you need the refreshment, drink it up, but it's only 5% poison. Would you drink it? Daniel Hakikaju is exposed in this sense in trying to divert attention away from what we need to be paying attention to the most. Because if you really did have a glass of water that was poisoned, it wouldn't matter that the rest of it was pure and clear and wonderful. It matters that there's poison in it, and it matters that there's poison in Islam. And as we know, nothing can make water on clean. So Muslims should be fine with drinking that 5% right. poison water. And Houston made a similar comment. He said, eat up, Habibi. Only 5% of these jelly beans are poison. That's it. Don't worry. Don't worry about the other 95%. Just, just take your chances and, <laughs> and have a few. Harold Shipman was highly admired in his society. That means that he should be judged on the 99.5% of his life in which he was beloved of the community and a pillar, a pillar of the community. 
that everyone trusted and cared for in his small town. Let's take it down from this true pillar of the community to Jeffrey Dahmer. Now, he did not have a bad reputation either. He was gainfully employed for most of his life. He was self-supporting for most of his life. He had a few periods of unemployment, but overall, he was a net contributor to society, except for the small detail that he slaughtered and cannibalized 17 people because of his position in society. It took him much longer to deal with each individual because he had to hunt them, dispose of their body, everything else. So let's say it took him the equivalent of two working weeks for every person that he disposed of. Even that would still run us at 0.45% violence for his entire lifetime because obviously he wasn't doing this during his working hours. So it wouldn't be fair to put this into his professional time. This is his hobby, not part of his profession, unlike Carol Chipman. So if Muslims with the same efficiency embraced their 5% killing of apostates and conducting jihad on the world, then they would have 189 victims, which seems like that Jeffrey Dahmer should be considered even more admirable in a lot of ways than Harold Shipman if you're looking at their percentage of violence of life because he is less productive in his violence. But still overall, he's a byword for terrible things, for evil. And yet 99.5% of his entire life was not spent in the hunting, dismemberment, consumption, or disposal of human bodies. So why is it that our society places such emphasis on that 5%. Daniel would have you believe, is that like some form of double standard? Oh my gosh, without breaking my microphone, can I just drop the mic for Mary? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and it's finished. I have nothing to add. If Muslims carry this out, they'd only average 189 victims each over their lifetimes. I mean, that's barely any, right? The world would be such a wonderful place if everyone only killed 189 people. So, that 5% matters a lot. Still, let's go ahead and figure out the other 95%. Check out this link for an all-star panel and eye-opening calculations of what all makes up the religion of peace.